How to use behavior trees to create enemy AI in Unreal Engine 5. First we're going to create an AI controller for our enemies. Right click in the content browser and go to blueprint class, then under all classes search for AI controller. This is similar to a player controller, however it receives inputs from blueprints rather than from the player. Call it BP underscore AI controller. We'll leave this for now and create the enemy character. Right click, go to blueprint class and select character. Call this BP underscore base enemy. Open the character blueprint. We want to add a character mesh to our enemy, so go to the viewport and select mesh. Then go to the details panel and select the skeletal mesh you want to use for your enemy. Next we want to move the character mesh down so its feet are aligned with the bottom of the capsule component. Next we need to rotate the character so that it is facing the same direction as the arrow. Next go to class defaults and in the details panel search for pawn. Set the auto possess AI to placed in world or spawned. Then set the AI controller class to the one we just made. Compile and save. Next we're going to create the behavior tree for our enemy AI. Right click in the content browser, then go to artificial intelligence and select behavior tree. Call this BT underscore enemy AI. The behavior tree is used to control what the enemy is doing and when they are doing it. If you drag off the root, there are three different composites to choose from. The two we will be using are selector and sequence. The selector will execute tasks until one succeeds, and the sequence will execute tasks until one fails. Select sequence. If you drag off the sequence, there are a few pre-made tasks to choose from. I'm going to quickly add a play sound to test that the behavior tree is being used by the enemy character. After that, we'll look at adding random movement, player tracking, and an attack system. After selecting a sound from the dropdown, drag off sequence again and add a wait. This will allow us to alter the time between the sounds playing. The order in which these tasks play is indicated by the number in the top right corner of each node. The order always goes from top to bottom, then left to right. I'll lower the wait time to 3, then set the random deviation to 0.5. This means that the delay will be between 2.5 and 3.5. Save this. Next we need to initialize the behavior tree in the AI controller. Open the controller and delete the tick event. Drag off begin play and search for run behavior tree. Go to the drop down and select our behavior tree. Then compile and save and go back to the viewport. Open the content browser then drag in our enemy character blueprint. When you press play you should now be able to hear the sound effect looping. Next we're going to work on adding some movement to the enemy. Go back to the behavior tree and click on new task. Rename this to Rome, then click save. Hover over functions, then go to the override drop down and select receive execute AI. Next right click and add an AI move to. Connect it to the event, then connect control pawn to pawn. Next, drag off control pawn and search for get actor location. Drag off and search for get random reachable point in radius. Connect random location to the destination. Right click on radius and promote it to a variable. Call this roam radius. Compile, then set the default value to something around 1000. Next, right click on the acceptance radius and promote this to a variable. Compile, then we can leave the default value as 5. Next, drag off on success and search for finish execute. Set this to true then drag off on fail and add it again. Leave this set to false. Then click the eye next to both these variables to set them to editable. Compile and save then go back to the behavior tree. Delete the play sound then drag off the sequence and add the task we just made. If you want you can edit the variables here. However we're going to leave them as they are. 
save then go back to the viewport. To test this random movement, go to the content browser and drag in a couple more enemies. When you press play, you will see that every few seconds the enemies move to a random location. Next we're going to make it so when the enemy sees the player, they start to chase after them. To do this, we first need to create a new blackboard. A blackboard is a memory system that works with a behaviour tree to help the AI make decisions by storing key information. Click on new blackboard, then name it BB underscore enemy AI. Click save, then open your blackboard. You can also open it by clicking the button in the top right. We're going to add two new keys to the blackboard. For the first one, select float, then call this detection radius. This will be used for the distance at which the player is detected by the enemy. You can set the default value here, but there is no need because we'll be setting it somewhere else. Next, create another key and select object. Call this target actor. This will be used to store the player character. Go to the base class drop down and search for actor. Save then go back to the AI controller. Here we're going to set the detection radius value. Right click and search for get blackboard. Drag off and search for set value as float. Connect this up. Right click on the key name and promote it to a variable. Call this detection radius key. Click Compile, then set the default value to the exact name of the key in the blackboard, which is Detection Radius. Then set the float value to something around 1000. Compile and save, then head back to the behavior tree. Next we're going to create the functionality for detecting when the player is within the detection radius. To do this we're going to create a service. A service can be attached to other nodes and is a background check that runs every few seconds to update things like whether the AI can see the player. Click new service then rename it to locate player. Click save then hover over functions and go to the override drop down. Select receive tick AI. Drag off and add a multi sphere trace for objects. Drag off the control pawn and search for Get Actor Location. Connect this to the start and end of the multi sphere trace. Set the radius to 200. Drag off object types and search for Make Array. Go to the drop down and select Pawn. Set the Draw Debug Type to For Duration so that we can test to see if it's triggering. Drag off here and add a branch. Drag off the out hits and search for for each loop. Connect this up, then add some reroute nodes to keep things tidy. Drag off the array element and search for break hit result. Expand this, then drag off hit actor and cast to your player character. Connect this up. Right click this pin and promote it to a variable. Call it player character. This system creates a sphere trace every frame at the location of the enemy and checks if it is overlapping the player character. Go back to the start and drag in the player character variable. We want to set it to nothing before the multi-sphere trace. Quickly compile and save, then we're going to add some new variables. Click the plus icon, then call this variable search radius. Set the type to blackboard key selector. Click the eye to make it public. Then add another variable and call it target actor. Make sure this is also a blackboard key selector. Click the eye to make it public. These variables will allow us to access keys within our blackboard. Drag in the search radius and get it. Then drag off it and search for get blackboard value as float. Connect this to the radius pin. 
Next we want to set the target actor key in the blackboard as the player character. Drag in the player character variable, then drag off it and search for is valid. Connect this to the completed and false pins. Next, drag off the player character again and search for set blackboard value as object. Connect this to the is valid pin. Next, drag in the target actor variable and connect it to the key pin. Drag off the target actor and search for clear blackboard value. Connect this to the is not valid pin. Compile and save then go back to the behavior tree. Right click on the sequence, go to add service and then click on the locate player service. Click on the service then change the search radius to detection radius and target actor to target actor. Save then go back to the viewport and press play. You should now see the detection spheres appearing around the enemies. If the sphere trace overlaps the player they are detected, as shown by the red squares. Next we want to make the enemy turn to face the player when they are detected. To do this we want to delete the sequence and replace it with a selector. Right click and re-add the locate player service. Click on it then set the search radius and target actor again. Next we want to drag off the selector and add two sequences. Connect the one on the right to the roam task and the weight. On the one on the left we want to right click and add a decorator. Decorators offer a few different features but we want to select blackboard. This allows us to check if a blackboard value is valid. The value we want to check is the target actor so set it here. We also need to set the observer aborts to lower priority. Next drag off the sequence and add a rotate to face. Set the blackboard key to the target actor. Save then go back to the viewport and press play. Now the enemy will stop and look at the player when they are detected. If the player walks away the enemy will go back to moving round randomly. Next we're going to give the enemies the ability to attack the player. Go to the content browser, right click, go to blueprint and add a blueprint interface. Call this BPI underscore enemy. Open it, then name the function attack. Add an input and call it target actor. Set the type to actor and make sure it's an object reference. Compile and save then go to the enemy blueprint. Delete these events. Go to class settings then under inherited interfaces select the interface we just made. Right click on the attack interface and implement it. Drag off and add a multi-sphere trace. Right click and search for get actor location. Connect this to the start and end pins. Set the radius to 200 then drag off the object types and make an array. Go to the drop down and select pawn. Then set the debug type to for duration for testing. Drag off the return value and search for a branch. Drag off the out hits and search for a for each loop with break. Connect it to true and then add some reroute nodes. Drag off the array element and search for a break hit result. Expand it then drag off hit actor and search for an equals. Connect it like this then connect it to the target actor pin. Add some reroute nodes to keep it tidy.
Next, drag off the equals and search for a branch. Connect this up, then drag off the hit actor and get an apply damage. Here you can set how much damage you want the enemy to apply to the player character. Next, drag off the apply damage and connect it to the break. Add some reroute nodes. Compile and save, then go back to the behavior tree. Click new task, then select the blueprint base. Rename this to attack, then click save. Go to the override drop down and select Receive Execute AI. Create a new variable and call it Target. Set the type to Blackball Key Selector. Then set the variable to Public. Drag it in, then get it. Then drag off and search for Get Blackball Value as Actor. Drag off and search for is valid. Connect this to the event. Drag off the control pawn and search for the attack blueprint interface event. Connect this to the is valid pin. Then connect this return value to the target actor. Then drag off and search for Finish Execute. Set this to True. Compile and save then go back to the behavior tree. Make some space. Drag off this sequence and add a Move To. Set the blackball key to the target actor. Then drag off again and add the attack task. Set the target to the target actor. Right click and add a decorator. Select cooldown. Then right click again and add a force success. Save this then go back to the viewport and press play. Now when you get close to an enemy they'll start moving towards you and they'll create a sphere which will apply damage to you. Next we're just going to show that damage is being taken by the player. Go to the content browser and locate your player character. Open it. In some space, right click and search for any damage. I have a separate video on creating a health and damage system which will appear on the screen now and also be in the description. For now we're just going to add a print string to show that damage has been taken. Compile and save then go back to the viewport and press play. Now you can see that the enemy is successfully attacking the player. Finally we'll add some quick animations to the enemy. Open the base enemy blueprint. Then we can quickly set this debug type back to none. Click on your character mesh, then in the details panel select your animation blueprint. Then drag the mesh into the graph. Then drag off again and search for play montage. Select your attack montage, then connect it up. Compile and save then go back to the viewport. When you press play you should now have a working enemy AI system using behavior trees. If this video helped you please feel free to like and subscribe or support me on Patreon so that I can keep making these Unreal Engine tutorials. Thank you so much for watching.